and we're for the Angers program to go to France. And I'm just, you know, I can't tell if I should be hopeful or not, but I'm going to just, you know, go for it. We'll see what, what happens, what comes up. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah, we're scheduling travel right now has become kind of a nightmare. Uh, it's it's very logistically complicated. Um, we're discovering. So I would imagine. Are you having to schedule for your work for people as well? Um, do people are they traveling back and forth? We have a you couple know? of my colleagues are in Germany right now, and then. Uh, I, I was supposed to be there right now and then in South Africa not long after and then China. So it's, uh, I'm in the same boat as everyone else, a little bit yeah. let down. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> well, I'm going to go ahead and we can start um, just with our introductions and everything. So I'll, um, I'm Meredith Church Pipes and I know most everyone here, but I work in the college as the global and civic, civic engagement specialist. Um, so my job is in general to help students have international experiences, both, both here and on campus, um, to be a support for that, um, to be a champion for that. And um, it's something I truly believe in and I, I am a firm believer in its value. So I'm excited to have this panel today and have an opportunity to talk with some of our alumni who had a variety of international experiences um, and who can share how that affected their path, uh, the doors it opened, the things they learned. Um, and today, I imagine we'll have a smaller group. Um, and I see Molly, uh, who I also know, Molly Campillo, and uh, Jessica Stiegel, I might know as well. I'll have to see her face once she shows up. But um, since we are such a small group, I really do want everyone to feel free to sort of jump in and have a more conversational experience than some panels might be. Um, right before everyone got on, we were sort of having like a COVID um, like debriefing, like talking about our experiences and <laughs> the challenges. Um, so we kind of talked about that. We might want to bring that in as we talk about some of these other questions. But what we can do to start um, is I'm going to let all of our panelists introduce themselves um, tell a little bit about, uh, well, kind of what they're doing currently, um, what, they're, what they studied while they were at App, international experiences that they had at App, um, and then we'll get into some of the questions that we have. And feel free at any point to jump in with your question. I have some just because it's nice to have something to give a little bit of structure and the ball rolling, but um, definitely feel free to jump in any moment. Um, and I know with the screen, nobody sees everyone in the same circle, so I can't like go around the circle. Um, but for me, uh, I guess I'll say, Jack, you're kind of my, the top corner. I'm gonna start with you. And we'll go from Jack to Jerry to Libby for um, in introductions. And then since we are such a small group, if we wanna just kind of continue on with the rest of us who are attending and just tell a little bit about what we're studying um, where we've been, what our plans are. I think that could help us know um, what's what we've got on our minds. Um, and if if we get like in a moment, I'll just pick somebody because you, you know if no one wants to jump in. But Jack, if you want to go ahead and start. Sure, sure, makes sense to me. Uh, so I'm Jack Terrell. Uh, work at a BMW here in uh, the BMW manufacturing plant here in South Carolina. Um, so I've been here. A little over two years. Um, currently, a supply chain specialist um, lead. So, just working on a lot of different automotive projects and parts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, uh, at App, I, I graduated in 2018, and I studied international business and economics. Um, minored in German and Mandarin. Uh, let's see, study abroads. Um, I got kind of greedy with my study abroad. So I went to uh, Costa Rica um, for a short-term study abroad. Uh, did another, then I did a uh, full semester in China, in Shenyang, uh, and made a detour through Nepal on the way back. Um, different story. Uh, and then uh, went to Colombia with Dr. Mesner, then did a internship in Germany, uh, 
before I circled back and came to South Carolina. And that was with Hirschvogel, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. But as a car company also? Yeah, they make parts for, yeah, they make uh, hot and cold forged steel parts for engine blocks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Jack. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm up. Um, hi, I'm Jerry Snyder. I graduated in 2014. Um, I studied international business as well with a minor in Spanish, and I did a short-term faculty-led in Costa Rica as well, and we were talking about this earlier. It was actually with Meredith, so that was a lot of fun. And then I went on to do a semester in Spain. Um, after I graduated, I worked in Wells Fargo for two years, an internal audit for international lines of business. And then I really missed working with study abroad stuff. So I actually worked at UNC in their study abroad office for two years. Um, and while I was there, I got to do some trips down to Chile and Argentina, which was really fun. And most recently I went to get my master's in HR. So I'll be starting with Boeing, hopefully soon, <laughs> um, down here in Phoenix. Thanks, Jerry. Um, hey everybody, I'm Libby Layton, um, and I graduated from App in 2013, um, and my major was uh, management, and at the time, I don't think it's an option anymore, but I majored in HR, um, was like my focus of my management degree, uh, and so I, when I was at App, I studied um, abroad for a semester in Hyderabad, India, um, and did a full semester there. Uh, and then after that, I guess, was my trip to Cuba with Dr. Mesner and Meredith, which was an amazing trip. Um, and definitely one day, I don't know, do you guys still offer this Cuba trip? Yeah, we do. I actually just went this past January. It was my first time back because um, I started having children and stopped going for a while. <laughs> but it was so great to be back. Yeah, we've we've actually yeah. Come so this whole we haven't. I cannot. That, so this coming I year, can't we recommend might that trip. Not, but yeah. Yeah, can't recommend it enough. So if you get the opportunity, go to Cuba with Meredith. It's the best. <laughs> so, um, and then I was a Holland fellow. Uh, and spent time in China and then stayed and did an internship in Beijing for the summer. So had a really amazing opportunity there to be in China. And I currently work for Food Lion, um, which um, little known fact, it's actually owned by a Dutch company. So um, have had some opportunities to work abroad and spend some time abroad through my opportunities at Food Lion. And I currently uh, am a employee relations manager uh, for the Food Lion brand. And so I manage a team that does intake and different with different employee and manager concerns uh, on the employee relations side of HR. Uh, so I've been doing that. Uh, for a year now managing the team. And before that, I'd been on uh, the HR side of things at Food Lion for, I, gosh, I've been with the company for almost seven years now, which is wild. <laughs> so to think I've been here for seven years, but I have, and it's been a great experience. So, yeah. That's great. Cassie, do you want to introduce yourself? I know you're, you're kind of in the back, background helping, but go ahead if you'd like, please. So my name is Cassie. I'm an accounting major um, with a minor in business analytics. I have not traveled um, with the school yet, but I am applying for the Holland Fellowship. So I'm hopeful to get into that. Awesome. Okay. Oh, Megan, you want to go next? You're next on my screen. So. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm Megan Temple. I'm a marketing major with a concentration in digital marketing, and I'm a junior. And yeah, I would love to like the industries I'm interested in are more like public relations and communications related, but honestly, I'm open to a lot of things. And I really do want to focus on a company that is globally minded because that has really become a passion of mine since studying abroad and living abroad it has just, it was an, an incredible experience that I would love to do in the future. Awesome, thanks. Thank Molly, do you want to go next? You're next on my screen. All right, sure. Hi, I'm Molly. I'm a senior this year. I'm double majoring in international business and global studies and minoring in Spanish. 
Um, and I also was very greedy with the study abroads. <laughs> um, I did a month long program in Spain. I did one of the um, service experiences to the Dominican Republic, then did Holland Fellows, which was so wonderful. And then returned to Fudan for their international program or international student summer program for a month in Shanghai before doing a fall study abroad in Tokyo and a spring internship this year in Dublin. Um, and so that was really fun. And then a remote internship with a company in London this summer that I'm hoping to return to when I graduate. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad, I'm glad. This is a good thing to be greedy about, I think, so. <laughs> I agree more. Yes. Jessica, are you able to introduce yourself as well? Do you have your audio going? If not, you can also like chat us something real quick if you have anything you want to share. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, we can hear you. Sorry, I was trying. My audio is like kind of messing up, but um, I'm Jessica. I am a junior business management major. I haven't studied abroad yet, but I am very interested in it. Um, my older sister went to Wilmington and she studied abroad in Spain and had a great time. So yeah, I'm just really interested in looking into it. Awesome, great. Thanks, Jessica. And Michelle Beauclair, I won't make you introduce yourself unless you'd like to. I imagine you're just popping in to make sure everything's working okay. <laughs> yes, I am. And I'm so excited to see Jerry and Jack. What a lovely thing. Hi, guys. Um, hey, Michelle. I, I'm, and Jack, I, I like your new blog, by the way. Um, but anyway, yes, Thanks. I just dropped in. I will stay, but um, let, me, let us know if you have any trouble. All right. Thanks, Michelle. All right, folks. Well, let me go ahead. Um, unless someone has a burning question right now to start, I'll just pick one off of my list and we can get started. Um, all right. So, hmm. All right. We'll go with question for folks who, so Jessica might be studying abroad. We've got a few folks that have already gone abroad. So this might be more something Jessica might be interested in. But thinking back to your international experiences, if you were able to give yourself some advice, um, and maybe you followed it, maybe you actually did what you needed to do, um, but what would you say it, are some ways that you can make the most of your time abroad as far as um, the impact it can have on you personally, professionally? Are there things that you're so glad you did that really, really changed you or opened up doors? Um, are there things you wish you had? Are you things you really wish you hadn't? Anything like that um, that you would want to share with our folks here? Yeah, I could, I could start. Uh, I thought about this question a lot and the thing that I did do some of and I wish I had even done more of is really be intentional about forming relationships with people from the country that you're visiting. Um, being, making friends, I said, when I studied abroad in India, um, it was wonderful as far as just, it, it was kind of built in that like, you know, within the dorm and within your classes, you could build these friendships and um, with the, or the students that you were uh, local to the school. Um, and that made for the most memorable and meaningful experiences as far as getting a full local um, opportunity to eat at someone's house or to go to their family's uh, house in the country on the weekend or to just have these really incredible authentic experiences. Um, I know in some circumstances, some study abroad programs, you're, you're with other American students, that's who you're around, that's who you spend your time with. And there's so much amazing things to experience with other Americans in another country, but really being intentional and putting yourself out there. It might be a little uncomfortable at first to be like, hey, would, do you mind hanging out with me? But I really think it's worth it because the, those relationships and those experiences um, just made such an incredible impact on my time that I've, I've been abroad and those relationships are, are just so special. So that's really the thing that I, uh, wish I'd even done more of, but so glad I did make the relationships and friendships that I did. Awesome. Thanks, Libby. And I would second, uh, all of that and, and maybe, uh, added to that, uh, I'd say, you know, if you're in a place and, and you're there, you're studying abroad or doing an internship and you just, you love it. You, you, you could see yourself being there longer. Um, do something about it, you know, go 
reach out to someone, try to um, form a relationship. If it's a job that you hope could keep you there, find out what companies are in that area. For, for me, uh, doing my internship in Germany, I realized, man, I, I love it here. I absolutely love the culture, the environment, uh, the mountains. Um, so I started meeting with people and that's kind of ipso facto how I landed where I am now in my current role. Uh, and then hopefully go back to Germany. So, yeah. Um, I would say definitely both of what they've said. You're gonna hear this, I think, a lot on the call where we're like, yeah, exactly that. Um, but something else to think about is I know the time goes by really quickly and you don't expect it when you get there because you kind of see it as this like big chunk of time. So I would say a tip that I would have is really think about what you're hoping to get out of the experience before you go and kind of when you first get there. Because I know for me, language learning was a big reason why I studied abroad. And making that intention to speak it early, speak it often, put myself out there, like Libby said, it really helped me make the most of my time there. And a lot of my friends were like, at the end, and we had like one month left, and they're like, oh crap, I still need to learn Spanish. Like, you can start doing it now. Um, but thinking about what your goals are before you go, I think is a big help in reminding yourself how to be accountable to those goals. Um, another thing I would say for me, I know before I studied abroad, I was really worried about the cost. Um, I had never left the country before, so it was a big change. It was kind of like all of this new area, new venture that was intimidating at first. And my biggest tip would be, you can do it. You've got a ton of support there app to help you do it. So those barriers are real, but they're also not going to stop you from doing what you want to do. So I would say you can do it. <laughs> Very good advice. Yeah, I, um, I, when I studied abroad in Mexico, I luckily signed up for a year because I got about halfway through and went home. And one of my friends who knew Spanish was like, have you been speaking a lot of English down there? And I was like, yeah, kind of. So the next time around, I really got on it. You have to push yourself because it makes you uncomfortable when you don't, when you sound kind of like an idiot every time you talk. <laughs> so it's, uh, you've got to really push yourself, especially with language. I, I agree. Do you guys have any hints or tips of how to kind of get out there? Did you like join a club? Did you do a sport? Was any little like thing like that that you did that helped make connections? Actually, Megan and Molly, you could um, throw something in there too because I know you were abroad as well. But. Yeah, I was involved with their Erasmus student network. I'm uh -huh. not sure if any of the schools that you guys went to had that, but I didn't know that even existed until I showed up. And it was probably the best thing that I did while I was there with making connections and getting to know other students from like all over the world. But I also joined their public relations committee and like helped them with their social media and digital marketing while I was there as well. And that was really neat working on a global team and having that experience. Honestly, probably one of the, my favorite experiences while I was abroad. Awesome. I think for for me the 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 thing that has helped me in my language skills the most has just been being put in uncomfortable situations. So in China, you know, it's it's a difficult language to learn for me at least. And so, you know, when my friends who were studying there also did not want to try Chinese, it kind of fell on me to get us our train tickets and, and all these sorts of things. So you learn while doing. Um, uh, when you have no choice, when you're sitting in a taxi cab and you need to know where to go, you're just, you're forced to do it. Um, and, uh, and, and that, it's weird. It's, a, it's hard to describe, but it's, uh, it was easier for me to do that in China because no one spoke English as much in the area I was in at the time. Uh, in Germany, you know, my colleagues love to speak English with me. Um, but in China, uh, my, my Chinese became much better, much quicker, uh, because I was forced to use it. Um, in Germany, and I would, I would say this is true for maybe other major cities in Europe, uh, 
is you, you, know, you need to be more intentional. Uh, you need to find someone who's willing to, um, you know, speak some half English, half French, half German, whatever it is with you, um, and just be willing to like let you stumble through it and then, you know, translate back into English when necessary. Yeah, I agree. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. It's so different than being in a classroom because when you're in a classroom, you're on stage every time you speak. Um, but like Jack said, you can really lean into those just like awkward moments. You're never going to see that person again. So, and 99% of the time, people are going to point out the things that you did right instead of the word that you messed up or the verb that you didn't conjugate correctly. They're like, wow, you did so great. Trying. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one thing that really helped me was staying with host families. Um, that was an option that I had for my study abroad, and it helped me a ton with my language because you learn not only how to ask about the culture and stuff like that, but how to talk to your host mom about who didn't clean up what in the kitchen and who needs to do this and the gossip from the ladies down the street. And you just learn so much more by having the family around and kind of having a multi-generational Yeah, I agree yeah. with that as well. Host families make a big difference. So um, that's something as you're looking at a study abroad to just consider whether that's an option for sure. Yeah. And one thing that I did when I studied abroad is um, found opportunities for like volunteerism. And that was just a really, really cool way to um, just do something different. Um, just finding, you know, hey, on a Saturday, uh, instead of sleeping in, I'm gonna go and uh, go to this little camp thing on the weekends that, uh, you know, I can spend some time with some kids and meet locals. And it, it was a really cool opportunity. And I think that there, if you're intentional about doing research and making connections, especially through your school, you can find ways to get connected with volunteer opportunities. And it's a, a, just a really cool way to do something different. Um, and it can be a little different than other people's uh, international experiences. Uh, so it was, it was really, I definitely recommend doing that. Great. Great tips from everybody. All right, so I'm trying to see, what shall we go with next? All right, so as far as from your international experience, um, now that you're in the workforce, um, and I know Jerry, you're kind of in a pause because of COVID-19's pesky, <laughs> pesky interference with the airline industry, um, but I um, mean, you, you've been in other areas, but from your experiences that were personal experiences, and you might not actually have been trying to develop yourself for a career while you were there, um, but what are some of the skills or knowledge that you gained while you were abroad that you've found particularly applicable in your field or in working in general? I can go for uh, I feel like we're probably all going to hit some of these similarly. Oh, same thing, yeah. <laughs> so, so for me, I think the adaptability and the resiliency you get when you study abroad was a big game changer for me personally, because there's just something about going somewhere where you don't speak the language that well, or maybe you don't even speak the language because you tend to travel around a bit while you're abroad. Um, and figuring it out and figuring it out whether you know people there or you're making totally new connections and you're totally out of your elements that just gives you this sense of, I don't know, you feel so much more confident and you feel like you're so much more self-assured. And I think that translated directly into internships that I did after, roles that I did after, um, knowing that I could go into a totally new environment and figure it out as I went has been a huge change in how I approach uh, not only like traveling, but also work roles as well. And I would second all of that um, times two. Um, just being adaptable is, is absolutely just a huge takeaway for me from, from being abroad as often as I've been. Um, also communication. So um, learning another language teaches you to be able to communicate better in your primary language, I think. Uh, so now that I work with people who English is, most of the, my colleagues are English is their second or third language. So when I send an email or when I 
need to solve a problem or ask a question, you, you start thinking, am I, am I being, am I enunciating the way I should? Am I using something that's not a colloquialism? You just, your brain kind of goes into overdrive as you start to think, how have I been talking? What have I been saying this whole time? And in turn, that makes you communicate better in whatever language you're trying to learn. Um, so it's, that's something that's really been a, a huge takeaway for me um, as I try to communicate in the workplace where sometimes that's just three word emails um, is getting your point across quickly and effectively. Absolutely. And I, I second all of the things you guys have said. I think problem solving is so transferable from studying abroad into the workplace. And something that is unique to my experience, I would say at Food Lion, because I support, um, you know, a retailer um, and interact with people that are from all different walks of life, from very rural areas, from uh, people from different spectrums of income and, you know, life experience. Um, I think prior to studying abroad, I'd had a pretty insular life experience, been around a lot of people that were like me, had similar experiences in life to me. Um, and that had been my life experience. And so then when I studied abroad, it really opened my ability uh, experience in building and forming relationships with people that were very different from myself, that had very different experiences in life. When I started my job at Food Lion and worked in a retail environment, it was a very similar um, opportunity to build relationships and rapport with people with very different life experiences from me. Even though we, I live in the same city as this person or grew up in the same town, they've had a different walk and path in life than me. And so I think that I was able to transfer building relationships with people with very different, you know, experiences in life from my study abroad uh, experience to the workplace when you might have to be around and, and work with and build relationships and have teamwork and collaboration with people with very different experiences in life than yourself. And so I think that was, uh, just a big thing that um, I took away from my uh, abroad experiences into the workplace. Thank you. So <clears throat> we gained these skills. Maybe your employer might not know about these skills unless you tell them in some way when you're trying to get the job. Were you able to express what you'd learned when you were trying to find a job? Was your international experience anything that helped you land a job? Could you give advice to these folks who've had these international experiences for how they can kind of market themselves when they pursue a job in the field they're interested in? So some of my experience was luck, um, some of it not. So uh, when I got a call from the recruiter here for BMW a few years ago, it was, you know, hey, we saw that you, uh, that you'd spent time in Shenyang, China, where we have a plant. Um, and, you know, we see that you speak some German and did an internship in Germany. Uh, so I had no idea that BMW had a plant in Shenyang, China. Uh, yeah, told them I did, of course. But um, that, that was, um, <laughs> you have to play along with it sometimes. Uh, but it, it, uh, it was, while I was in Germany, it was, I was very intentional about, like we've discussed already, learning the language. Um, if you hope to work abroad at some point in the future, you need to as master the language as best as you can, in my opinion, um, whether that's for your own personal uh, well-being or just for a professional uh, uh, purpose. But um, yeah, those two experiences, my study abroad and my internship experience, both were the reason my application was pulled out of the stack. Um, and it was brought up in my interview where I was asked interview questions in German uh, to test whether I truly spoke German. Um, so there's, there's things that, uh, as far as the, the bit about problem solving, uh, 
yeah, they, they absolutely suggested that, hey, what is something during your internship in Germany, living in Germany, what was some what was a problem you had to solve? What was something that you didn't expect that went wrong? And how did you solve a problem in another language, in another culture? So maybe that's part of the company I work for being a global company, but absolutely without having those experiences, I would not have this job today. Wow, great. Yeah, you are a particularly good example of this, Jack. So <laughs> how it all kind of came together, right? <laughs> Some things work out. Yes. <laughs> I think I would just say that same thing can be true for so many companies now, even if a company isn't a global company, you're going to be working with people from very different backgrounds, like Libby said. So thinking about how you can tie your study abroad experience, whether it was a formal work experience like an internship or studying abroad and exploring and going somewhere totally new, those can be tied into your behavioral interview questions. They can be tied to like situational interview questions. So you can think about so a lot of companies now ask, tell me about a time you had to adapt to changing circumstances or something like that. You had to do that for a whole semester, for multiple semesters, the whole time you were over there. Um, so thinking about how your experience maybe can tie into some of those, like tell me about a time or something like that. You have a lot of really rich experiences that you can share in that interview um, that just show how great you'll be in those scenarios. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I would completely echo you guys talked about your interview and, you know, being able to speak directly to um, those behavioral interview questions and tie them back to your experiences abroad, I think is perfect. I um, spent uh, many hours uh, with uh, different folks in the career office practicing and doing mock interviews. And I, I think that prepping and having those questions ready uh, for when it is the time that you're interviewing is essential um, and preparing and practicing so that you feel comfortable uh, speaking to those different experiences. Um, you know, I wouldn't get too strategic about it. Having a wonderful time abroad. Don't be thinking about how you're going to tie it back to an interview question. But, you know, when you, when you start to head down that route of, you know, getting ready to interview for questions, think back to those experiences that you had. Um, they will happen organically. You don't need to, you know, try and make something happen to, you know, oh, what's the problem I'm going to solve while I'm here. But, I, you know, to be able to have those experiences, I think it, you will have them. And, and just being able to have a great time and be able to prepare for those interview questions. I also would say that in my experience, um, I actually joined my company through an international traineeship program. So uh, my, inter my international experience was specifically uh, sought after as a, a qualification to join the program. Uh, so I spent six months learning about retail operations in America, and then I spent six months working in Brussels, um, which is where one of um, the company's headquarters is based out of. Um, and so if you are intentional and do a lot of research and try and find programs that tie specifically to international opportunities or like you guys mentioned, global companies, um, definitely make that known that that's a passion and an interest for yourself. And you might be surprised about the opportunities that come your way. And, um, you know, even if you don't join the company as, with an international element to your job, if you continue to express, hey, I'm interested in, in international travel, this is a passion of mine. I know personally, I've gotten experiences to recruit abroad uh, for uh, J1 programs where we, we staff uh, grocery stores during the summer in our really seasonal busy areas. So just expressing, hey, I really, I love international travel. This is something I'm passionate about, getting those experiences to go recruit abroad and uh, to do uh, different things. Uh, might, it might happen. So definitely uh, speak up and, and share your interests. And Libby, you made me think of something I think would be helpful for them. Uh, so like all the three of us, I would, I feel comfortable saying, probably sought international, internationally focused career paths, um, something with a global company or something with an international flavor to it. Um, and I can say for me personally, BMW was not the only company I applied for. 
What I'm getting at is that if you guys are curious what companies or programs are out there that have an international focus, knowing one of the three of us uh, doesn't mean that, for instance, only I can tell you about BMW. I could also tell you about Del Hayes. I could tell you about a couple of other ones, Volvo and otherwise, that I applied for. Um, and so knowing someone who had the same goal as you and achieved it, um, or that's ended up in the career path that you want to end up in, that doesn't mean that they can only tell you their path. They can tell you other ideas. So just a thought. That's very true. So um, I don't want to jump in if someone else has a question. Does anyone who's attending want to jump in before I go on to another question? Anything that's occurred to them? We can just all smile at each other. We're like, <laughs> that's always funny on Zoom, isn't it? Um, all right, well, I do have some more questions I'm curious about. Um, do you think that the international, the type of international experience matters? You know, we have at App State, and I know most of you, well, all, all of our panelists did more than one international experience, but we have, of course, faculty-led programs. They're usually 10 days to two weeks. Our Ange program is um, about a month. Um, then, of course, we have full semester, a year abroad, or an international experience. Do you feel like the impact, um, and of course I won't be offended if the faculty-led program wasn't the most life-changing in comparison, it's okay, um, but do you feel like there is a difference in the impact each of those had on you? Of course that could be, you know, related to a variety of variables, but what do you, what is your thought on that? Kind of open-ended, I mean, it could be personal impact, professional impact, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe aspects about it are more important. Maybe the location matters. I'm just throwing it out there. What are, what are your thoughts on that as people consider yeah. their options? Yeah, I could start. Um, I did uh, a week in a couple different places. I did um, a summer and then I did a full semester. So um, I would say each experience had so much to offer. What I would share is, you know, Jerry spoke to, you know, the fina financial constraints of international travel earlier. Sometimes you may not necessarily have a full option to say, hey, I'm going to go study abroad in Europe for the summer uh, or for an entire semester. That can be kind of pricey. Um, but I do think that there are some more affordable options. I know that India was, once I got there, it was cheap. And it was very, if you're willing to travel on uh, trains and do like just some very interesting out of the box uh, uh, type of travel options, you can go there and spend very little money. So, um, if you can make it happen, I do think that the most like personally impactful and the growth that I got this semester was unparalleled. I, I loved all of my experiences, but the relationships and the, the time that you spend there and the different re just experiences that you can have during a full semester, I, I, it just is wonderful. Um, but you can also have just an incredible experience in a week long trip. I mean, I still, to most people that I talk to today, I say like one of the most amazing trips I ever went on was to Cuba and Meredith, I think it was like seven days, eight days uh, yeah, that we did that. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's not a long trip and it, it's one of the best I've ever been on. So I, I think that if, if, if it is an opportunity, I highly recommend a semester, um, but you can have an incredible opportunity even, or just, an experience in just a week. So, um, but if you can do it, make it happen to go for a semester. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I think a lot of it goes back to if you're thinking about what you want to get out of it and willing to put yourself out there. So you can go on a faculty-led trip and you can spend all the time with the other students in the program, or you can really get to know the people that you're meeting along the way and practice the language or get to know the culture. And you can be in, in cities in Europe, like Jack mentioned, where people want to default to English and say, no, no, I want to practice. And, and 
I think a lot of it goes back to putting yourself out there thinking what your goals are, but to Libby's point, the longer you're there, the more chances you have to do it. And I know if I could go back, I would probably tack on another semester to my semester abroad just to stay longer. So I think they all have value. It's just thinking about what you want to get out of it and which one fits that goal of the best. I, I would totally agree, um, especially the part about, you know, if you could tack on another semester. Um, I think the, uh, you know, internship and study abroad, I did two semester long chunks abroad, separate chunks. And the thought at the end of them was similar. So if I just had another month or another three months, my language skills would just just skyrocket. I would be fluent. I would be doing any number of amazing things. Um, so uh, that, and again, that's not to say that a week long trip does not have value. Um, and also that there's not, that it holds you back in any way. <clears throat> uh, when I did Costa, my Costa Rica trip, um, there is absolutely no way that I, I could have organized that on my own. Um, and I don't mean the complexity or logistics of it. I mean, the, when I went to Costa Rica, we met with local coffee growers that had a personal relationship with a uh, bald guy, the entrepreneur uh, living in Boone, which has great coffee if you guys haven't tried it yet. Um, and, you know, so how could I have possibly have recreated that personal relationship on my own? No amount of money or preparation could have done that. Um, having said that, I think longer term trips or, you know, my non-faculty led experiences put me on the spot and made me learn, made me problem solve, uh, made me more resilient. Um, and there's something to be said about it, that good feeling you have after you talk to a taxi cab driver and on your, after a month there, they finally get you to the place you wanted to go the first time. And you only have to say it once. Um, <laughs> you, you feel like you're fluent. Now you feel amazing. It's just those little, you know, wins um, that sometimes you, you need to ha not have help to experience. So I, both, do both, do them often as much as you can. Awesome, thank you. Well, we've got <clears throat> what I think is about five or six minutes left. Um, does anyone want to ask a question before we kind of do our final question and wrap up? Okay, so Jessica, maybe you can see on the chat, she said, being someone who hasn't studied abroad, I do have concerns regarding the pandemic. Does anyone have any information on the current limitation of opportunities? Um, well, that would probably be a good question for me to answer, I guess. <laughs> so as far as through App State, um, we follow the guidelines that are put out by the UNC school system as a whole. Um, and they're basing those, of course, on CDC recommendations. So right now for spring semester, all study abroad, both going and coming has been canceled. So we don't have any exchange students coming in. We have nobody going out, um, but we, are continuing to hold hope for each semester to come. So right now we have faculty-led programs that are planned for the summer um, that we've posted. Some of them are still under the review process, which usually under the review, the things that might change are the cost or maybe the dates. Um, although sometimes faculty might look into things and say, well, you know, this might not work out, especially in the current situation with the pandemic. But right now we're planning on summer, but um, I imagine the UNC school system will make a call uh, probably in like February or March on whether those might be canceled depending on how the world is progressing as far as containing the virus, <clears throat> as far as vaccines. You know, there's so many unknowns right now. Um, so yeah, so unfortunately right now we don't know for sure I mean, if you're considering study abroad, what I would probably say is to go ahead and think about, uh, well, I don't know where you are in your uh, path, uh, your program of study, but if you were thinking of 
fall of 2021, I would just go ahead and apply and see what happens. And then, you know, it's a pain, but you might just be able to have an idea of where you want to go and say, okay, let's move that to spring and, you know, just keep bumping it back until Lord help us when we get back to being able to travel again. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so that's, that's currently what's going on. And of course, you know, all of these decisions are made uh, not to complicate our lives and take away opportunities, but to keep us safe. Um, so we have to just be patient with that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where we are currently um, that really right now we're basically limited to virtual study abroad, virtual internships for the spring, which are an option. Um, I think from what we've heard from our panelists, you know, a lot of what is the most valuable about an international experience you really can't get in a virtual opportunity. Um, but it's all about what you're comparing it to. If you're graduating and will never get the chance to go abroad, I'd say a virtual option is better than nothing. But, <laughs> but I really hope we can have that real experience. I think the, the putting ourselves in that place of discomfort is kind of key for growth, uh, like everyone said. So, um, but yeah, that's a great question, Jessica. Any other questions, Megan or Molly? Um, yes, I was wondering um, if you all had any advice for, I mean, I think I'm the only senior here, but any advice for really taking advantage of your first job and your first position um, in order to like set yourself up for more international opportunities as you go, because I know that might be difficult right off the bat. Um, so just sort of wondering what strategies you all had to make sure you were able to like prioritize that in your career. So I, I could start, I mean, I intend, and like Jack had mentioned earlier, you know, intentionally looking for programs that have an international element um, would be pretty essential. If that's one of your top priorities, I would, you know, may not work out, but check out and apply and do your best to make those connections with folks at those types of companies. Um, and then I think that once you get your foot in the door, I found out who did our international recruiting and I was like, hey, this is something I'm interested in. Keep me in mind. And I reminded her every time I saw her. So, you know, I think just being, uh, you know, friendly and a go-to person that, yeah, you know, people think of um, building those relationships and, and showing that, you know, you're someone that uh, folks at your company can count on. Um, and then when they need somebody to do the really cool thing of, uh, you know, going abroad and doing some, an experience or going on this trip or being a part of this project that gives you international exposure, um, definitely you'll be in mind. So uh, just being intentional and, uh, you know, once you get the lay of the land, make those relationships. And uh, I'll second that and um, for sure. It's, it's once you get your foot in the door of the company, um, like Libby was saying, uh, you know, make it known immediately from day one that you want to work as an expat or you want to work abroad or travel or something. Um, and, and, you know, don't expect it to happen that day, that week, that year even. Um, it's, and it's something you need to constantly make known, um, find a good mentor, uh, find a mentor who's done an expat and come back, done a few expats. Um, so it took me probably two years of working here before I found the right few people who, you know, saw the way, saw things the way I did in terms of the value of an expat and me wanting to do it. Um, and like Libby says, you know, you have to be a little on the annoying side as far as pestering, you know, the, the international HR person. I, I do that with my boss. He's going to hear from me probably after this that I want to go to China and work, um, even though I'm not qualified. So it's going to, um, and that's the other thing, uh, really, if you're trying to convince someone that you should be sent abroad or be doing something uh, abroad, uh, put yourself in that person's mindset. You know, what are they thinking? You know, if you just started today and you ask your boss that you need to go work for the next two years in a different country, 
what are they thinking? Um, you know, are they thinking they're, that you're inexperienced, that you don't know what you're doing? Uh, that would be the time to say, hey, but I have these language skills. I've lived in that place before. I have these contacts or i am had this success in this project. Try to head off the obstacles that, or the questions that will be put in your way because it's expensive to send someone. Um, to, to send someone abroad for a company can be and usually is on the expensive side. So you need to be your own best advocate. Uh, that's not to say that no one is going to want to send you. It's just to say, you know, try to position yourself in the best way possible. I, I can't think of anything to add. So I, my first role was, I guess, a little bit different than yours. So I can speak to that, where it didn't have the international component built in. So I was working for Wells Fargo in Charlotte, and like Libby and Jackson said, I made it very known that I wanted to work with international stuff. Um, so I was put on the international lines of business team, and, and I got to go all the way to exotic Canada to do some audits. Um, but it was really fun, and I still learned a lot from being in a new culture up there. And um, then I transitioned to a role where I was more directly working with international stuff and international education. So I got to go work in uh, South America with that. So exactly what they said, even if it's not built into the role that you start with, um, raising your hand and letting it be known, I think is always a good decision from the get go. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> well, thank you so much, everybody. I know we've kind of come to the end of our time. I think Cassidy, it's till 1150, is that right? Is that when I'm supposed to wrap it up? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure of the time frame. I know that the next like panels start um, at noon or something. There's okay. not another faculty led one until 1230, but okay. All right. Well, we won't be so uh, extreme on cutting everything off, but I'll, I'll wrap everything up right now. Um, and just kind of final words to say, um, we have a great career services center, obviously creating events like this for everyone. I know that they do have lists of companies that recruit with us that do have some international component. Most of the time, um, as I know our alums would probably echo, usually when you're starting with a company, you might not have that really fancy expat assignment immediately, but you can have, know where there's places you can get started where there's that opportunity and kind of express that interest. Obviously, even if you end up working domestically, the skills and experiences that you have uh, that you gain abroad are are applicable to many things and of course very enjoyable. So it's definitely worthwhile no matter what. Um, and as far as using your resources, we've got three alums here who obviously are willing to share their experiences, their knowledge, um, tell you more about their companies. Uh, and so Jack, Libby, and Jerry, if anyone's interested in getting in touch with you, is it okay if they just email me and I can connect you if you have future questions? Absolutely. Anything like that? Okay. So please feel free to reach, sure. out to me. <clears throat> reach out to me and I can connect you. Um, I'm also available, Jessica, as you're considering options. Cassidy, too, if you're thinking about it, just uh, to kind of talk about more broad ideas and I can direct you, sorry, <clears throat> my throat, to wherever you might need to go for your next steps. Um, Molly and Megan are actually gonna be speaking on a panel uh, about study abroad in a couple weeks. So you're welcome to join for that as well and just hear about their tips on finding a good location and, and ways to take advantage of that. So I really appreciate it. Um, I don't know if Jack, Jerry, and Libby wanna have one last quick quote to everybody and then we can wrap it up for today. Maybe Jack, we'll start with you again in my top sure. left-hand corner. <laughs> um, if you, if, if any of you, if um, cost uh, of studying abroad is a concern, um, please, please send me an email or text, call, whatever. Uh, it doesn't, it, it's more studying abroad uh, traveling abroad is more accessible than sometimes life makes it seem. Um, 
there are resources out there at App State, outside of App State, and there are things you can do on your own. So if, if that's ever a concern or you just feel like you have concerns about doing it, um, let me know. I'm happy to talk through it with you. Thank you. And Jack, you're working on helping people with a, a blog website too, that you can share as well. Do you want to just uh, yeah, chat yeah. if people want to check it out? Sure. Yeah, that'd be good. I just had a lot of people over the years say, you know, it's too expensive to study abroad. And then um, had a situation where I ran out of money in Europe um, and had to last for four months there um, and uh, realized that it, it didn't, it wasn't painful. Um, it actually was better than my original plans. So anywho, um, check it out. Uh, just, just trying to help some people find resources and inspiration and different ways to see the world. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, Jerry. Yeah, I think I would just say it's worth it, not only for all the international experiences that you get to have, but how much you learn about yourself and how much empathy you gain for people who are going through adjustments to a new culture, whether that's going somewhere new or just going into a totally different work environment, life environment. It's so worth it and it makes you such a stronger friend, worker, support system for all those around you. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And um, I just Appreciate the opportunity to connect with you guys today and uh, just encourage you guys to just take full advantage and uh, just get the most out of uh, your time at app uh, and international experience is just the highlight of my time in college. And, um, you know, now I'm like, what is it? Close to eight years removed from school, which is mind blowing, but um you know being able to think so fondly of that that time and it's it's just something i would uh, go back and do all over again any day and um just really encourage you guys to take advantage of that because time moves so fast and uh it's the, it's the best <laughs> best part of college is international experiences for myself so totally encourage you and thank you awesome well thank you everybody for being here Great to see everybody's faces, especially these faces I haven't seen for years and those that I get to see now mostly just virtually around. But um, thanks, everybody. Hope you have a great day. And um, I guess we'll see you see you around. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> have a great day. Bye, you guys. Bye. See you, Jack. <laughs>